Okay, special meeting of the New Orleans City Council, uh, November the 18th, 6.30, and that come to order, please. Call to order. Roll call. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Six members present. Thank you. Uh, if you would please, uh, good evening everybody, thank you for being here. If you have a cell phone, if you turn it off and put it on vibrate, it's really appreciated. Mr. Van Bock will remind us. I will do that. Good. Again, thank you all for being here. We had a roll call, I guess first thing we want to do is the ordinance, is that correct? We'll go right into that and then we're going to uh, our other business, please. Yep. So you want to go ahead and read it, sir? Ordinance 15-52E, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the renewal of health insurance and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor, move yes. to adopt ordinance 15-52E. Second. And the explanation of this, this ordinance, this is um, our yearly health insurance that we have to offer our employees uh, for the union agreement. Uh, it is pretty cut and dry on that one. Tomorrow at, uh, at 2 o'clock, I, I call the staff meeting for us for the staff to go over it. And in your attachment, you see all the options they have to choose from. Um, last September, when former city manager Kim Jones signed for the 2.5% reduction, she had put us into this OPEC um, group. And basically, once we sign that, we are actually committed to stay in this group until the end of uh, 2017. So even next year, we'll be forced to stay with this group until December 31st, 2017. You said we have an attachment. I have no attachment. Did you not come pick up your packet today? That, that the, was I didn't know I was supposed to pick uh, yeah, I got you up. Look at this, right here. There's an email sent out. Well, that's not. Can you pass that down for me? I've been gone all. Oh, that's not right. There's some, no, that's, that's the ordinance. Yeah, that's a bunch of I got you. Thank you. A different packet than everybody else. Thank you. That works. Did I see another one to look at? Mike. I've got Mike. Mike, can you do one to look at? Sure. Uh, here's 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 uh, Mr. City Manager, actually, this is uh, what we're sort of locked into it, are we not? We are Mr. locked into it. And again, this has to be submitted for renewal on November 3rd. Is that not correct? That is correct. I'm reading on the source. Yep. So actually, all we're doing is saying that we need to get need to pass this to, so we can get it in force again for the employees by November 3rd. It has to be passed so I can sign the renewal by 11 30. Right. Dick, if you'd like time to look at that, you're more than welcome to look at it. Look at it earlier in the day. Local. We're sticking yes. with current plan. Are we made aware of this when we voted on this the first time that we were locked into this in 2017? I, I don't remember. It makes no difference now. But yeah, I, I don't remember, but I assume that we probably were that we went into a pool, and nine times out of ten we may not get it any cheaper. Anyway. No, I, I, don't I don't think we were. Well, when I when this was when we had our meeting, and of course I brought in the upper level management, so Mr. Kitko and Ms. Harris was in there, and those two did not have any idea that we were locked into a contract. Oh, I don't remember, but I can't swear we were. Mm -hmm. so but on the other hand, for the advocate Brent, our union rep, our employees was aware. Two things could have happened knowing those two facts. One, upper level management missed it. Brent had read a copy of the agreement after he gets it as he gets everything, and then he noticed it but didn't communicate it with upper management. So somewhere shaped along the line, yes, it was signed to be in a three-year agreement. Upper management last year probably didn't realize it. Brent read it and realized it. Okay. Here's what I remember from that moment or that conversation was is that the whole conversation was about being able to switch over real quick because she had discovered that we were going to get that discount and then, and she shared how much it cost. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember any conversation about being locked in. All the conversation was about is we need to do this now so we can get this. And we were avoiding take advantage yeah, we were service. avoiding an 18 to point nine percent increase or yeah, something that to that effect. Yeah, right. right. well, and then we took a massive decrease. Yeah. Yeah. It so, saved. Yeah. Remember that. If I remember correctly, because I was, I was playing right at that time, it was, I think it saved us 2.5% on our pre-joint. Yeah, that's a lot of money. 18,000 or something. Yeah, they're all free. I do remember that. I just go in and we can't walk in. I mean, we're locked in by contract to 
absorb the entire rate increase. Is that correct? We are locked in until December 31st, 17. What, let, let me see what page you're on. I'm on uh, City of New Carlisle. Current plan and renewal plan. This one? Yes. Okay. Cur current plan, $20,675.09. Renewal plan, same benefits. $25,843.86. Can you, can you do me one more favor and flip over to the next one behind you? Yes. So that's an expanded view. So if you look at the 2016 annual call at the bottom there, and you have 2017 annual cost with 10% re renewal scenario. So right now, what I'm going to tell our staff is what I can see from it is we can, whatever option you choose, is really going to be dependent, is going to impact our premium rates in 2017. So if you look at it, it's an estimate. So for example, if they choose a renewal, um, the 2017 annual cost premium would be 344. If they do this 12.5% deficit recovery, then the, then the 2017 premium cost would be 307. So we can't argue or try to get better rates. It is what it is. We can't go to them and say, we can go to another company. Not until December 31st, 2017. We are locked in with this group until then. What happens, okay, you say we're locked in, but I mean, you can break the contract. We're going to pay big money to get out of it. I would rather just stay with it opposed to No, but I'm saying yes. if it came to that, that's what we would have. If it came to that, I would have to consult our legal. Okay. Yeah. But I'm sure that. Nancy, you're going to argue in OPEC too? Are you locked into the three year term as well? Yes. I, I'm really curious now. Maybe we need to pull the minutes and see what that conversation works. Well, I remember that. Did, uh, now, do we have a union contract that states we must pay the entire cost increase? No, it's it's based off if there is a it's broken down off percentage of increase. So if it's more than a five, if it's if the increase is more than twenty percent, let me pull out my union contract so I actually see the right. I'm sorry, what was the question? What was the question? Okay. <clears throat> what was the question? John, I'd like to know what the question that you just asked was. Are we locked into a union contract that we, the employer, has to pay the increase, or can we pass all or a portion of that increase along to the insured employee? Please. We have a union contract in the state's default. Therefore, if premium cost of health insurance plan at the time of its annual renewal, or reasonably available equivalent increases less than 10 percent, bargaining unit employees shall be shall not be responsible for the payment of any additional share of the premium cost beyond 5 percent set forth above. The new premium cost of any health insurance renewal increases between 10 percent and 15 percent. Bargaining units shall be responsible for a payment of 20 percent of the amount of the increase, in addition to any previously imposed share of costs imposed by this article. The new premium cost of any health insurance renewal increases more than 15%. Bargaining unit employees shall be responsible for a payment of 25% of the amount of the increase, in addition to any previously imposed share of the cost imposed by this article. So employees, including myself, will absorb some of the increase. Before, but because of, the of this increase. union contract that has been already approved, we're locked into the terms of this. Now we're locked into the terms of this. So there's right. nothing that we can do. Right. When does our contract come for negotiation with the union? The union is ending December 31st, 2015, and December 3rd we'll start the negotiations for the new one. All right. Thank you. What I read here is the current contract is 20,000 and change. The renewal contract with the same benefits is 25,000 and change. That's approximately a 25% increase. You know, right on the head, that's exactly what it is. That's which means, had an offer, had an which means that so for the five thousand dollar increase, approximately twelve hundred and fifty of that will be borne by the employee. There will be an, an amount observed by the employees. Yes. You just read the paper. The, the, the city will not absorb all the increase. Yeah. And that's cut and dried. It's mm -hmm. non-debatable. The only thing they can debate is they have the option to change the benefit structure on their own behalf, is that correct? Mm -hmm. We don't even do that. All we, all we, we don't, the only thing that we, we can't change is none of the benefits are changing from last year, none of the coverages are changing from last year. The only thing that's changing is price. Any, any 
any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have one question. Many times in the past few years. We're all in the 
platform. We go down there for stuff, they come up here for stuff. The big thing what I see with this is with the location of 70 and also Route 4 going into Dayton, a lot of drugs come up through this way via those routes, criminals too. It's a very easy escape to get on 235 at east or west on 70 or continue on south in Dayton. Um, so I would, I would love to have a particular shared Sarah that can, can, that can focus on 235, focus on New Carlisle, and focus on Carlisle. Um, again, that's council's decision. Uh, we have to do our due diligence with this, with this money. Our voters approved the 5% income tax increase for this purpose. Um, there are also some things that we need to also do in the next five years. My well, mindset. Let's back up one minute. You just said 5%. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5%. For clarification, I hate that to get in the paper. Okay. Uh, where are they at? Half, half percent. Oh, okay, so moving forward, there's also some things that we need to look into. My mindset is, and I'm not trying to be negative, I'm just planning for this not to pass in year six. Um, uh, hopefully it does but we'd be a fool to act like it's going to pass. We need to save money. We need to, we need to really save money out of this every single year. That way, just in case year six, we're not falling on our face again and have to do major cuts and have our general fund supported. There's also the capital things that we need to purchase over the next five years with this as well. We need to look at at least two new, new, two new SUVs for our police officers. I'm sure there will be uh, requirements for new radios, new vests, um, maybe Mr. Wright can uh, maybe go on to that a little bit later. Um, there's always unknowns that can happen, and I'd also would like to leave some money for extra, for extra duty. So there's a lot that we need to cover over the next five years with this police money. We have to take it year by year, obviously. Um, we expected the cost to go up, and we did, um, but the numbers are in front of us, so it would be council's decision to decide how you how we use this money. What would be your recommendation? I'd just like to hear. What would, what would be your recommendation? I think we should at least start off with three. I mean that we're we're up to now with extra uh, extra, mm -hmm. extra deputy. Um, just so everybody knows, last month there was about 71 hours of extra duty patrol in our town. Um, I think we should definitely entertain splitting that half deputy with the with the full township. Okay, you say we have two and share one, or we have three. We have three and share one, so we would have three and share one. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we get to the top for four, we're looking at $397,000. And if you look at how our finance director budgeted out, the dump, her, she, she estimated conservatively. She put $450,000 of what we're supposed to get estimated for dump per year. You know, right now, for she has her contract services only set out at $360,000. But the cost of four deputies is going to be three hundred ninety-seven. dollars We cannot rely on our general fund to support this. Our general fund needs to be itself needs to worry about itself um, and have that rainy day fund. You know, so we're gonna have to look at creative ways if we want that full four that full back. Is it do we do three, not split a deputy, and dedicate all that extra to extra duty? Do we do three and a half? Split one with Bethel Township and then have also additional extra duty? Um, I mean there's not too many ways you can be creative with it. We have the numbers, we know how much it costs, and we know how much we have. Unless Mitch Sheriff Kelly would be willing to give us a 50% reduction on the cost, but can you can you answer for that? Um, well, that's fine with me. Are you okay with that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. I invite you guys to this I'd like to clarify the council if I could. Our discussion was do we think it's worth looking at this? That was this morning. I, you know, I can't talk to the other trustees, make any kind of a decision outside of meeting. And so I'm coming here to say I think it's worth looking at. Uh, you know, we have to then make a final decision. Uh, I just want to make that clear. And that's strictly what it is. is a discussion. And to be honest with you, we probably sure. won't get into much of that tonight. We'll probably have to have a separate work session with their trustees, our council. Because we're going to have to look at it. We have we have an extra part that they do not. You know, there's a lot of specifics that we need to be worked out. You know, but I think it would be fair that if 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 we if council council can vote if they want to even look into sharing a deputy at some point in time, right? They can make a motion for you to look into it. Yeah. Sure. 
you know, so. Yeah, then it really have to make a motion. Then I'm just asking you. Just now, I will say this too, and I'll say this to Ms. Brown as well. This is something that we can't drag our feet on because we're actually holding up the sheriff's office from putting things out in bid. So it's, it'll, it'll work. It's going to have to be a faster process, but it doesn't have to be done today. But I think that we should look into it. Mr. Mayor. Well, I didn't read the first, first. Go ahead. Okay, I'll start off by saying I'm totally opposed to sharing the deputy for several different reasons. Um, and we can go into this all night. But I would like to see us have three deputies and get the gentleman sitting right there with you and some of our money and get this cops program on the ball and moving as fast as possible. I went down there with you and I saw, I liked it. Rick, could you speak up a little bit? I know I'm down. sorry. I'm, okay. I apologize. I have hearing aids in, and since I've got them in, I've got them over because it sounds loud. I apologize. <laughs> um, I'm opposed to sharing the deputy for many, many different reasons, and you know, it takes quite a while to do that. But I would like to see him around the deputies and get involved with him and you and the rest of us. opposite view of Mr. Lowry. Uh, I think that we should participate in a joint uh, deputy. I had talked to the sheriff today, he had given me a call, and he said that be, he's like, we can do what we want, but he would encourage it because it would put an, an extra deputy on patrol in this area. And as you know, we just saw on the news, there was a guy living in a vacant home breaking into cars. I mean, this, this, the crime is up, I think is what the sheriff had said. Not, it's not as high as it was in 2013. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? But it, but it has gone up, and I think that we need our deputies back. I mean, we promised four deputies. That was the whole campaign levy that everyone but me participated in. We're going to get our four deputies. Well, we'll have three and a half, but that fourth deputy, that half deputy will be here and look like a fourth deputy, and, and it's going to be able to work with the township. And you know what? We lost Deputy Beller. He's a great asset to this city. And I know the township right now is utilizing him for extra duty. Am I correct, Ms. Brown? And I think he'd be great to have back and going in between the two sit the, the city and the township. So. I think it's something we should look into. You said the one key there was the extra duty also. That's a great, you know, they're allowing us to do that and letting it throughout the force to work the extra duty. And we pay them for our work. So that's like having an extra deputy at that time in our city. Oh, and I, of course, they would respond down also. Yes, but I understand what you're saying. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but I definitely have, and I've definitely talked to people about it, and they've noticed it. I see Deputy Cox up here and his, and his beautiful SUV he has constantly. And you know, I see our deputies down there constantly. And I think that instead of having a drain on both of our resources, sending either Deputy Cox coming up to us or sending one of our deputies to them, and I know that people have said this in the past, why not have something that can go in between both of them? I mean, well, let's say one guy, one day they make an arrest in Park Lane. Well, now he's going to be there all day for that. But the next day he'll come here and be all day for that. I know we, that's a lot of stuff getting into the weeds there, but I think it's very important. I think that. Uh, we definitely need to look into it and definitely do it. I mean, we promised four deputies. Why not give them what we promised? Well, my point was, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give the four deputies. You're looking extra, for the combination. By extra duty also. Yeah. That, that was the point I was trying to make. Oh, well, I understand the I, point. That's it. Mr. Zim. A um, couple of things. Addressing what everybody else did, I think it's worth exploring to see if the logistics and the financial aspects of sharing a deputy can be worked out. Uh, I certainly hate the thought of New Carlisle paying $50,000 for half a deputy and getting a fourth or a third. I'm sure Ms. Brown feels the same way about Bethel Township Fund. So we want to be sure we've got an equitable distribution. I already have a problem with a lot of our deputies that are paid for by taxes from the citizens of New Carlisle, not the citizens of Bethel Township or Clark County, just here, we got deputies down there all the time. I think we got to get a better look at that. I think if we pay for them, we get to keep them. I realize that's not 100% practical, but I think we have to look at how much time is not spent in the city of New Carlisle. We have to look at it. Secondly, I do have a question about the cost of deputies. It says if we hire three, we get two deputies at 99000 and $53 a year. 
and we get one deputy at $85,395.70. In other words, we got two family deputies and one single is what it looks like to me. However, if we go to four deputies, we lose our $85,000 a year deputy, and we get four ninety-nine dollars a year deputies. Let me clarify that. We don't know if this is going to be until whoever bids bids on the job. We don't know if it's going to be three deputies with a family or two deputies with a family or one. So this cost on four could very well go down. If we get four deputies on a single plan, you're going to see this reduce 13,000 times four. They have to bid. They have to bid. They, they don't know. Bid. So this is a high bid because it's the most yeah, worst case scenario. Gotcha. I didn't know that. That's why I was asking. And I will say this too. Our two deputies we have now, they're on a single family plan. Deputy Allender and Deputy Cruz. Good. I don't want to focus on the Allender's on the family. So, you know, Cruz is married. So, Cruz is on a single. So, we got one on one essentially. One on family, one on single. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You know, so until the bid on it, we're not going to know. These are the higher ends. That answers that question. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. We, one of the things that when we sent this uh, proposal into uh, to the city manager was that I wanted to propose that what's the worst case scenario and looking at what's the top dollar you're going to be spending for 2016. So you have a good, good mind's eye when you look at it. If we hired four deputies and they were top eight deputies, I'm going to pay that. Or they all take this plan. It could be less. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we did promise four deputies when we asked for the levy. I think we have to deliver the equivalent of four deputies because the citizens said we will give you the money to do it. It is our job to do it. And if you look at three and a half. Well, if you look at three and a half and you offer at least 20 hours a week and extra duty, that 20 hours a week that is going to equivalent to that four. Yeah, three and a half plus it. We have to offer them four deputies. And there are several ways to get there, I understand it. And, and I'm not opposed to looking at some of the alternative ways. So we got to get a contract to the sheriff within the next few days. We got to get a contract for four deputies, not three and a half, and hope we can cover it. We promised four. I believe we should keep our promise. Actually, I think we said we would like to bring our deputies back. I don't know if we actually used the verbiage that, but we may have, I don't know. But I understand where they come from. Mr. Lowry, would you like to? <clears throat> sure. Um, how many people, and I think you could probably answer, how many people were in Bethel Township ballpark? How many do you want to go to know? Okay. Um, I shared Dick's concern, and I'm, and I'm sure his as well. Um, if if we're sharing a deputy, my thought is there's a outside of New Carlisle, there's a lot greater number of people. And my thought is the ratio is going to be outside of New Carlisle. Now, whether we're saving money, I'm sure we will be. But my thought is instantly citizens of New Carlisle are going to see that. They're not going to see the savings, even though it may be there. They're going to see we passed a levy or a tax to have cops in New Carlisle, not outside. And I think that is going to anger a lot of citizens in town when they see that. I could be wrong. It's just my opinion. I'm not against looking into that option. Um, I mean, I'm not completely closed off to it, but 95% of me is feeling I'm, I'm not for it. I just I don't think that's personally the way to go. You're going to have too many people, too many citizens in New Carlisle saying, you know, why are we paying this money for, you know, a cop car to be used outside of New Carlisle, and we're paying for the fuel while it's out there, and this and that. I'm, I'm not saying that's exactly how it's going to be laid out, but that's that's my scare. And then when it comes around for that 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 tax to be passed again, I feel that could really hurt us. Um, that's th th that's just how I feel on that particular subject. I think you know we definitely need to come up with the right combination so it equals out to four, whether it's you know three and. Do we get, is it a guarantee, I don't think you'd say it's guaranteed always, but is the pool there for extra duties almost always that, you know what I'm saying? Is it always it's there, but it doesn't mean they're going to be picked up. Now you're relying on other people to pick it up, like their will. That's what I'm asking. Sure. Let me, let me present it to you guys like this. And I, believe me, when it first was told me about sharing a deputy, I didn't want to do it. And then I started thinking about it. And everybody, you, know, you can't split hairs if it's going to be there for 20 hours, I mean 21 hours or up there for 20 hours. 
Crime is interrelated, just as the people are. If they go down there and get a criminal, you don't think that criminal comes up here and commit, commits crimes? Another thing, too, you have to look at the population density of the area. Bethel Township's got 13, 14,000 people, but they're spread out. I'm going to set the park lane. Here in New Carlisle, we're going to have 6,000 people here in a small 2.0 square mile town that we have. Right. So when you look at the crime stat between the two municipalities, I don't know which is higher and which is less between Park Lane and New Carlisle, but we're so intertwined. And if people want to get there and split hairs about they're down there for 20 hours or up there, they can't do that. Now, if it's something significant, like they're down there for 35 hours a week and up here for five, that, that's cause for concern. Maybe maybe we maybe we shouldn't split hairs like that, but the taxpayers will. You can guarantee it. Well, the taxpayers need to be educated. I agree, I but I agree, but it's not that simple. And I think most people are in support of this. I mean, you had, I mean, you had multiple people talking about it during this last election season, and and look, Bill Lindsay got elected. That was his big his big key issue was let's share a deputy. That was something I talked about. I think the people know about it. I think it's a good idea. I mean, I, I don't. Well, moving forward, these new coming years, shared services are, are a very popular thing. I mean, that's how these small municipalities have limited budgets get by is these shared services. I would not be shocked in the next 20 years that our fire department is not a shared service fire department. We can't go on and we're, we're not, our tax base isn't growing. Quite honestly, our tax base is shrinking. Our elderly population, population is not put into this. We have an aging population. We're going to have to start thinking outside the box to say, look, citizens want to get that concerned about splitting a deputy. They need to see the big picture. And that big picture is, at the end of year five, if this doesn't pass, we're going to be right back in that same position that we were a year ago. Crime is going to shoot out the roof. We're going to have to do another levy. We need to show people that we're serious. Controlling 235. I would love to see the fellow that we got shared by. I would have to have a mic in the perfect scenario. You can't, we can't say we want them to do that. We can say we want them. The other has a choice. We may want a different shift. We may sure. want a different area. We can say Errol would want them to say we want them back. We may not want them to come out. I, think you know, it I don't know if he does or not, but mm -hmm. I'm saying we can't ask them. Um, question. Do you know of any other community you see that does do that should be able to do the difference of the areas in this community? I'm not going to go here. What's why? There's something we could look at. Uh, there's a lot of places that does share. Not unfortunately, I agree, but you know, we don't have the money to bring back for 
Well, you just said we have a choice of four or three. Well, that, okay. Well, I did say. Not that, is what you said. that is what you said. Mm -hmm. I said. misunderstanding you know, you know, the whole thing. You said we do the three, then we're going we're gonna to split the fourth. Is that what you said? I never three. said anything like that, Mr. Craybacher. I said we have three. You can, well, you can split the fourth. That'd be us three and a half. Okay, am I wrong? I said that. I, I suggested that. Oh, okay. Well, you suggested that. I was the one who I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. You have the numbers here. You have what we can afford. I mean, it's it's A or B. That's what it is. I mean, you can't unless somebody donates money. This this is what we have. Well, we said with the half with the half percent, mm -hmm. we'll be able to bring in five hundred thousand dollars. That's what that that was the figure that we were get. That was you, the prior city management. I had nothing to do oh. with that. I mean, I I had no clue. I was not the city manager. Well, we don't know for sure what it's going to bring in, John. I mean, the well, last I know we don't know thing here was thirty-six thousand dollars that we've gotten in so far. Mm -hmm. That's mainly corporate money. That's what it is. I mean, you well, got to that that make sense. Sense. So, so doesn't that make sense if we're looking at this figure right now, two eighty-five to three ninety-seven-five, to bring the three, say that's exactly what we're going to do, and then go forward from there? I would say you should at least publish our offer. Yeah, See how the money comes in. You know, we're going to three. That's that's if what we're going to. We're going to add to that. I'm sure that we write the contract that we're adding. Sure. You know, I mean, there's different ways you can you know, you can tap it. We can ask all night and argue all night. No, I understand. Can, can I voice my opinion now? We're going back and forth with. But we need to bring back three and then go from there. Say so bye. Bare minimum. Absolutely. Can I voice my opinion now? Absolutely. I agree with three. I think three. The, the main key. To this I'd like to look into the sharing definitely. That's something I think we should look into. But we bring back three. But we definitely put it out there that we need the extra duty definitely also. So far, the two deputies that we have now, as you saw, put in 71 hours last night. If we get a third deputy, and I'm sure they would like that time and that extra money to be able to do it. The good thing about having the extra duty is you're not paying curves, you're not paying medicine for that person. That is out. Well, we're still paying them at that point, but you know what I'm saying. We're paying lesser money for that time that they're out there. And I think the extra duty is the way to go for us. Three deputies, extra duty, but also look into this program, see what that can happen with. Sure, but that, that's a possibility. It doesn't hurt to look at. It. I mean, we can wait six months to see how that debt's going to come in. We see it. Mean, you got to understand our finance director. Of course, as any finance person should do, you should estimate the service. Why would you estimate your income being high when you think you're far short? You know? So, you know, we'll have a better understanding, especially after January, about exactly how much it's going to produce. Right now, there's just too many of them. But you really want to do it. Until it's April. April. No, it's not until April. Well, you won't know that, and then you won't, you know, you won't take another year to really see how much money you actually have. Yeah. Which is why I recommend putting it so we figure out how much money we're actually going to get. But you guys have a new deal to, to hold your promise up to your citizens. You know, we need to get back close to the amount of force we can possibly get. If I'm your citizen out there and you're talking about extra duty officers, I mean, I'm more concerned about when you actually have those like, extra duty officers on duty. Are they on duty? They're actually, the ones that are doing it now are actually on key times that would be good for them out there. That's what I'm talking about. I pray that we're talking about. Our parking firm that we have, I pray them so high. They are giving up their own time. They are seeing these trends in crime, and they are staying on and working over to the peer division of the crime. And I cannot be more impressed. I have had one on one with her. They understand so much in that way. And they are good. 
addressing this, you guys to take care of this. I could not have asked you. You guys did a fantastic job. They are so well Could we hear from the Sheriff's Department now? And we've heard basically all of us saying what we're trying. Uh, first of all, I am going to go right up and speak to the Sheriff's Office. Well, could you, could you go to the podium to slide and pick up and say that? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And he can also pick you up very well on that. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to come this evening. I'm Doyle Wright. I'm the Chief Deputy for the Clark County Sheriff's Office uh, on behalf of Sheriff Kelly, who was unable to make it this evening. I, I've listened to all your points and they're very well taken. And uh, obviously we're here to provide a service and to bring back to this community the safety that uh, the residents, I think, are, are demanding they've wanted. They've spoken when they passed your levy, and uh, I think we've done as much as we could this past year. I commend each of you for uh, taking that effort and bringing back law enforcement to the, to the best of your abilities with what limited funds you have. And we've tried to work closely this year in doing that by providing the two full-time deputies and then some, supplementing them with as many hours as, uh, as you could provide with the extra duty. The only side note to the extra duty that I think is a problem is that that is not something we can ever order people to do. It's a voluntary basis. While the novelty of it is great right now, that could wear off in months down the road and you may not have anyone filling that. So you can't at 100% always depend on your extra duty to be something that you're going to get filled all the time. Uh, the two deputies that you have here currently, they, they do that. They, they work tons of hours. Uh, they'll take the majority of those hours. Deputy Beller, I know, has come up and worked some of those and some of the other deputies. But uh, for the most part, those two deputies that you have, Deputy Cruz and Allender, are doing a fantabulous job. And they work hard at trying to make the citizens of this community feel safe and bring back that safe feeling for everybody to live here. So having said that, I, you know, going and moving for the third one and then you looking later on or potentially sharing uh, with Bethel Township, I think is a, is a great move in a, in a new innovative way. It's innovative from the standpoint that you're doing something that not a lot of communities around here has done, but I think you're, you have that potential because when you're looking at other communities, they may sub, sub plant or uh, contract with someone because you will have uh, cities that do contract with townships and their constables in that township, but their police officers in the city and they patrol both of those. Some places are metro police and some other places are city police. Uh, the city of Beaver Creek some years ago did exactly that. For many, many years in the city incorporated in 1980, they had a contract with Beaver Creek, Ta Beaver Creek Township and they policed the city of Beaver Creek and Beaver Creek Township. In the township, they were constables. In the city, they were police officers. Uh, they lost the levy in uh, the early uh, 2000s and that contract went away and the sheriff's office took over the township and the city ended up uh, just having the police officers stay in the city. That was a million dollars out of their budget. It was a big hit. Um, so, and the, and the residents of the township felt that. Uh, they, they felt that loss because they went from seeing multiple police cars rolling through the township all the time to seeing a, a township deputy because the deputy sheriff or the sheriff's office is only able to provide that one deputy for a minimum number of hours per day, eight to 12 hours is all that we get. So you're giving an, an opportunity here where you're gonna do kind of that same policing, but you're bringing it into modern day and you're gonna share that potentially with the township that also is struggling in the same fashion with trying to keep crime down as much as you are. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a good sharing opportunity for you to get back to that four, and then if you do have extra duty, you would supplement that and, and do a great thing. The three, I do agree with the city manager when looking at your numbers. Three is something that you go to right now, and I, I appreciate that. I brought along some crime stats that I, I'll leave with you and I'll give each of you to look at, but you'll see the trend has been uh, your highest year back in 2013 was a, seemed like a stellar year that you had a lot of crime going on for whatever reason. That's a year you did have four deputies. Uh, I don't know if crime was just uh, different for that era of time, what was going on, something may have driven that. But uh, we have, over this year, noticed uh, when we put the deputies back out, we're trying to put them in peak times and work with the city on this and the city manager, your crime rate has went down. Things have, things have occurred. Those deputies are, uh, I've heard from many of the residents, many of the businesses, they like them because they stop in, they're personable, they, they visit with them and people see that. 
Uh, I think that in this community is vitally important. Uh, I think that the deputies should be very personable to the people. That way they're approachable. Um, it's a great community here. Uh, New Carlisle has always had a rich history of, of being a great community. You're kind of out in the middle by yourself. Uh, so it's not easy if, if there is a need for law enforcement quickly. It's us or the highway patrol. Huber Heights is quite a ways off, but they would come on mutual aid if we needed them. But there's no, it's not like we're next to a city here where you can just call them and all of a sudden they're here for mutual aid. So we've got to maintain the law enforcement that we have and we have to work diligently to do that. Uh, but like I told you, I did bring the uh, stats from 2012 until current time, uh, the ones that we have on, and you'll see that the trend is, is moving. The reports are less. We've had a little rash of thefts and things going on here in town. You're going to have those from time to time. You could have 10 deputies here and you're still going to have thefts going on. Um, uh, it's the opportunity and uh, the moment of need, and that's what's going to cause crimes to occur. Uh, we, we are battling in this county a heroin problem. It's not just in New Carlisle. It's not just in Springfield. It's across the county we're battling with it. Uh, it's worse in certain areas of the county than it is others, and the city of Springfield obviously has more uh, problems with it than we do in the county, and they've had more deaths than we've had in the county. But uh, that drives up crime. People have to get their fix, so they're running around and they're stealing things to trade that for drugs. Uh, our, our, our job is to try to curb that. Visibility. You're never going to be able to measure visibility. The visibility we know works. People see the law enforcement and a marked car go down the street, they're less likely to do something and think about it. But there's no way to truly measure that. How many crimes did you deter by driving down the street where well, you don't know that didn't occur? So unless that person flags you down and says, hey, I was going to steal that car over there, but I saw you, <laughs> you're not going to know those things. So I, I, you know, that's just, just my mind's eye of this whole thing, and I think it's a great opportunity. We love partnering with New Carlisle. We have been here a long time. Uh, we've had a, a great history with the, all the council members here and the city employees and uh, our deputies seem to really enjoy working in New Carlisle and it's been a great relationship and, and it's been like a family to us for the many years that we've been here. We want to continue that service. Uh, we want to provide you uh, the best services possible. And the figures that we gave you, that's not us trying to make money off of this. That's not what that's about. We're just passing on the cost to you. You're paying what we would pay for a deputy to be at our jail or on the road or whatever it may be. Uh, we're not, it's not a money-making business for us at all. Uh, that's not what the purpose of this is. Our purpose is to, can, to provide the best professional quality law enforcement that you can possibly get in this community, and we're going to provide that at the rate that it would cost us. Uh, so I hope I've answered those questions for you. I've given you some insight from our side of it from the Sheriff's Office, um, and I'll take any questions you may have. I, I just have one, if you would, just relay to the people here and also the paper of the other entities that we get along with the Sheriff's Department. I'm talking about deputies and... Yeah, the there, there's services that actually you're going to get that's not paid for, and I'll right. be honest with you. Some of those, you know, if you have a, uh, a need for a detective, we're going to send a detective. If you have a need for more than one deputy because you have, you know, if you only have one deputy on duty at a time. Domestic calls take two deputies. Uh, serious crimes, robberies, and those things in nature, more than two deputies are going to respond. We're going to send those additional units. If we had, you know, hopefully it doesn't occur, we had a serious incident here and had to bring out our detective section, had a standoff of some sort, uh, we would bring all of our tools and you would get the command staff, you'd get everybody. We're not going to send you a bill the next day and tell you, oh, well, that cost us $10,000 last night for us to come out here and bring all those people. That's part of what the services you're going to get. When, we, when you sign the contract with us, you're signing for those deputies, but all the other things that are kind of the hidden things, you get those along with that. The de the, we still put a deputy out in Bethel Township in what we call Area 1 every day, regardless if you have a deputy out in Bethel has a deputy out. We're still putting a deputy in that out to patrol Area 1. So that deputy is going to pass through New Carlisle. They may, say two, they may see two cars or three cars because the Bethel deputy, he's going to pass through New Carlisle sometimes going to different areas of Bethel Township. So they may see three different deputies passing through the city of New Carlisle, but only one of them is yours. Uh, that's, that's all a plus. Those are good things. Yes, Mayor. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because I was going to ask the I similar know. question. You know, it pops up a lot in New Carlisle as to why we don't have our own department. And that's, 
I mean, he, he just said it. You know, we pay this this amount, which which is a lot of money, and it sounds sounds like a lot of money, but when you look at it as to how much we get with that money, like you said, we get you know the detectives, the crime lab, you know the jail, all these extra goodies right. uh, that we, we could. Whole department. Yeah, you yeah you've got the whole department to utilize right. with this technically small amount in comparison if we had our own department and exactly. had to pay for these individual things ourselves. So we I use mean, BCI and we also some items depending on what it is we take it to the crime lab. BCI right. is typically doesn't cost to us but the crime lab does. Right. And every time we take something to the Mind Valley Crime Lab we pay that out of our pocket. We don't pass that on to you. That's just a service that we, we know it's for lack of better terms it's cost to doing business. Anyway, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I'm glad both of you brought that up, and I would like to say that I've been here quite a while. I was in New Carlisle when they had their own police force before the deputy, before deputies came to Clark County. Absolutely no coup comparison. None whatsoever. You guys outshine every day of the week. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. And the problem with having the police department at that time, we had a bunch of young people that was coming in, and to be quite honest, they were cowards. They wanted everybody to know that they were police officers. And that's not the way it's supposed to be done. No. Uh, you guys do an excellent job. I'll tell you something else. I hope Patrolman Beller isn't out there patrolling this street when I leave because he may pull me up. <laughs> Good guy, done an excellent job. But sometimes a lot of the other ones are getting spited because they bring up his name. He was good at the DUIs and whatnot, and drugs. But I'll tell you what, we've had a ton of good deputies in this town. We have two good ones right now. There's some past. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bring up their names, but you know, we know who they are. They've all been there. Was Dollar good? Absolutely, but I don't think he's the greatest out there. We've had some really good ones in here, so uh, yeah, they're all good. I would they guarantee you, people. I would guarantee this third deputy that you're going to get back is going to be as equally as good as the two that you have. Okay. It'll be a good team. They'll work closely together. Um, we had to do something different here than we do for the other uh, deputies. As you know, most of our deputies have a take-home car. Those that work for the other townships have a take-home car. Uh, because of financial reasons, that wasn't something that was afforded here. We understood that. Uh, and we worked with, uh, with Mr. Bridge on that and told him, you know, that, that's a perk. You don't have to give that perk to them. Uh, the two ladies that you have knew coming into this that wasn't a take-home car. They accepted it with no problem. To me, I think that speaks of dedication. It speaks that they cared about this community and they wanted to do a good job. Uh, I had the conversation with both of them when they got the job and I said, all I, all I expect is minimal things from you and this is what I expect. You to go out there, give it 100% every day, give it your best effort and let the citizens of that community and the, and the business folks know the sheriff's office is in town, we're open for business and we're here to serve at your pleasure. And I've, I've heard nothing less than that's what these two ladies have done. Both of them have been stellar acts. And it's going to be, all, be brought up at a future count in the back of the government car. Okay. Yeah, that. Go ahead. Please. The reason it was reduced is because we had to cut our fuel budget by $8,000. Yeah. And I am more than willing to entertain because I have instructed Ms. Harris to uh, put that fuel account back up to normal levels, which we allocated $20,000. That is a good thing. Like as that. long as they don't live an hour away. Exactly. Right. I'll be honest with that. I mean, if they live 15, 20 minutes away, that's, that's a totally different story. But if they're going back and forth an hour, then we got to look at it. Mr. Zambach has a question. I don't have a question. I have to yeah. kind of echo what Rick said. I've always Absolutely. felt we received good value from the Sheriff's Department. I've enjoyed our working together. I wish we had a lot more money so we could put a lot of deputies here. Sure. Or I wish you guys would charge only half of the cost. But <laughs> yeah, we love to do. We love to do more business, but Absolutely. it is what it is. And I, even though we had a, a small staff this year, I did have have a lot of instances where I saw the highly visible deputies. Various times of the day, I live on Clay Street, so I see a lot of activity and a lot of traffic. And, and I was really very pleased with the way you helped with so I Don't want you to think, even though I do some complaining, it, it's not about what was. What you did was good and we're happy. As large as our county is, I think it's approximately 471 miles, the whole county is. I would say this you can go a lot of times to other cities around us, not putting them down, but you'll drive through that whole city and never see a city policeman in that city. You can rarely drive through Clark County and not see a deputy sheriff car someplace. That's true. 
and Anyone? we have a lot more area to cover and fewer cars out. Right. Any other questions? Questions at all from Chief Deputy? Anyone? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Thanks you. for the input. It was very informative. I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead, sir. That we need to possibly contact with Parkland Sheriff's Department to bring more than we can do. We'll start off with three. And let's start without the motion. Right. Motion just to bring in one more deputy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do that? Yeah, I just asked and they said yes. Yes, you can. Well, I'll second. Now, that deputy won't start to have the first of the year because our fund will That's correct. Sure. We're actually still on a taxable action. Thank you, sir. So, here, here's how, here's how I made a motion. Mr. Lowry made a motion to increase the deputies to three as of January 1st. Can I add to that? Do I have council's permission to also allow deputies after January 1 to start taking part so the given a reasonable distance? That would be a that's not in there. It was my discretion. That's one of the things we're I'd definitely that. Within the I don't think that needs a motion. I think that's just a sense of council. That's yeah. up to the city manager at that point. Well, I'm just recommending because and there's a lot of that's not only the purpose of the home and the deputy who comes here in your own car to transfer everything over to the cruiser. If he's on his way in the cruiser, the car goes out, he can be there, or she, I'm sorry, in a matter of minutes, rather than have to come here and say, no, I don't know. So, please, but we're right. That's a whole different story. I'm just sorry we went the wrong way. We have a motion. So we have a motion, and Mr. Zambok, you did second, correct? Yes. Mr. So the motion again, you want to read the motion again one more time, please? Uh, the motion to uh, increase, the, increase the number of deputies to three full-time deputies as of January 1st, 2006. Everybody on board with that? As far as the motion? We have a second. Yes, yeah, second. Any comments, everyone? Any comments? Question? Would you call for the votes? Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Uh, I'm voting yes, as long as everyone is aware that we are doing the third one, but we are not done and we are going to find the combination for the fourth. I want to make that clear. I'll send that in. Please do. In the explanation. Mayor McLeod? Yes. And I also vote yes with the knowledge that this is not a restriction to three. It is immediate increase to three. Okay. Very good. That's zero. Is this concerned? Pass six oh you said please. Can I ask yes. Yes, please. Go ahead. How many weeks before we have? Then we got four now. Operation? Mm -hmm. Operation? Mm -hmm. yeah. We got the Two with the current the driver, we have one that sits and then we get a couple more fuels. So we got four of them. Well, I thought you had one that you were going to get fixed. One was fixed, yes. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Along with the positive, we got more operation, including the more focused as well. So we do have it. Oh, we got the car, so that's why I bought the more focused one. That's why we got it. Have to okay. Have to okay, got it. I have uh, something to ask at this point now. Shall we set up a time with Bethel Township trustees to look at the possibility of going into another half deputy with them, full-time deputy, with half and half? Would we like to set up something with the Bethel Township trustees to discuss this to see if it's something that could happen and put together? Is this something that we should allow Ms. Brown to go back and consult with her trustees? So they well, that's, that's what I'm trying to find out here. Would you like to find out if they would? Yeah, I, I, need, I need to make sure that we have a majority of the group. Okay. okay. And roll? Yes. I'm not trying to put it on, but should we wait for one hour uh, to see exactly what the finances are? I mean, we could go to a meeting and say, yeah, we want to do this. We have no idea what the money is going to be. 
Well, that doesn't mean we can't work out the specifics and wait for that money to come so when we know what money we have, we're good to go. Or we yeah, all we're doing is yeah. investigating, yeah. if they're willing to investigate, the idea that we might like to share a deputy in the near future that we're looking at. Would that work for you, Nancy? Okay, that works for everybody and to look, take a look at. We can't do anything to Yeah, we can't push anything. We'll, we'll know. You'll get back to the... Mr. Bridges and let him know and then we'll maybe, if they're in for it, we'll try and work something out. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Other business? Any other business with anyone? Other business? Anyone out in the audience have anything to say? Anyone at all? Okay. In that case, Mr. Zambach. We are adjourned.